For decades, I've had the practice of picking out a person or an item in the Christmas story that I particularly relate with, with the events in my life from the previous year. Two years ago, I selected the Magi. They were a powerful example to me of uh, the saying that we hear in, in the peace prayer, for it is in giving that we receive. Those Magi came to give. They weren't looking to receive anything back. They came in the mystery of a travel that called them, a star that hearkened along their way. They came bearing gifts of themselves and of the riches that they had, but their expectation wasn't to receive anything back. They came with that emptiness, willing to give what they had and to accept whatever came to them. And what they accepted and what they received was truly far greater than what they gave for they saw the newborn Christ, the King of the world, God made human. What a powerful event that must have been for them, how it must have shaped the rest of their lives. And yes, indeed, they were givers and not worried about being receivers. Jesus born into our world is God bent over in love, who comes to not be, not to be served, but to serve. Your life and my life, too, are to be lived as joyful servants. Incarnation happens with every decision to love, to serve. To love is to serve. Who do you love and who loves you that brings you such joy? That's a great question for us to ask that question of ourselves and other people. Who do you love and who loves you that brings you such joy? I'd like to tell you about a visitor I know. He was visiting his friend in a nursing home. While waiting by his bedside for the friend to wake up, the nurse came in to tend to the dying man in the next bed. Through a small crack in the bed curtain, the visitor watched as the nurse began tenderly washing the face of that man. As she did so, she smiled upon the dying man the entire time. The visitor said to himself, Now I believe. I saw God's love descend upon a dying man in the loving gestures of that nurse. I'm leaving here today believing in God. My question to you and to myself is, what joyful witness to God's love will I offer today? We are all called to be healing ointment for one another's wounds. That's how we serve. That's joyful servanthood. As we reverence human dignity, embrace the poor and the marginalized around us, and respect the gift of all creation. What joyful witness to God's love will you and I offer today? December 8th is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, commemorating the fact that Mary was born without original sin. To us as Sylvania Franciscans, this is also a very special day. On December 8th, 1916, Mother Mary Adelaide, our foundress, along with 22 sisters from Rochester, Minnesota, came to the Toledo area. They were responding to the call from Bishop Schrems to educate the children of Polish immigrants. Today, we are very proud of our 104 years of dedicated service in education and many other ministries. We hope and pray that as women of peace and seekers of justice, we continue to say yes to all that our God calls us to do. The quote, it is in giving that we receive, means that God is not outdone in being generous. For as we give care to the poor, comfort the brokenhearted, reverence human dignity, and respect the gift of all creation, as we say in our mission statement, we contribute to works of the Holy Spirit and are showered with the spiritual gifts that the Spirit has promised us. 
as Dr. Maureen Gallagher points out, when we contribute to something greater than ourselves, we manifest our spirituality. Then scripture tells us, for as we give, there also will be gifts for us, a full measure, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over. That's from Luke chapter 4. And so we share the blessing of the spirituality of community life as we continue to give and to receive the gifts that God gives us. 